All right, we're ready. Who wants to share some gratitude? Um, we're under under contract. Or anything? We're under contract. Rose, under contract. Great job. Great job. Marie? I saw you, I saw your square light up. I didn't know if you were you had you had something you wanted to share. No, I just think I wasn't on mute when I thought I was. <laughs> I think Donna's got some good news, right? Well, um, I have good news in the sense that we terminated one contract and we submitted an offer on another property <clears throat> the same day. So that's good news that we well, have these another clients of yours are turning you into a contract king, aren't they? You have no idea. Yeah. You have yeah. no idea how many I contracts you, I've written. I bet you if we had a contest on who could pull off an offer fastest, it would be Donna. I think so. I agree. <laughs> I've had a lot of practice over the last couple of weeks. There you go. Well, sometimes we, um, the, the beautiful thing about that is that in, in moments of, of high stress, right, you're canceling one contract and you're creating another one. You're like, I got this, right? So if you, just as a, as a, as a sidebar, if you do not feel comfortable putting together an offer, then we need to talk about that. There's a couple of mock offer videos on the YouTube channel, but what I, what I want to avoid for all of you is that there'll be a moment in the very near future for each and every one of you where your client looks you in the face and says, let's do it, let's write it up, right? And at that moment, you're either gonna go home or go back to the office with a huge amount of confidence because you know how to put it together or you're gonna freak out. And more often than not, that happens after 8 p.m., right? And so that's going to be even harder to rally all the people that are going to help you, you know, take the next step. So uh, let's pretend like that happens now. And if you're not familiar and confident with how to put that together, then let's talk about it. And we can put a, a session on the calendar, um, particularly for some of the newer folks in the group, to make sure that you understand, like, how to put together an FHA buyer agreement or um, how to put together a listing agreement or something like that. So um, as we all know, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so and take some time to go back through um, some of those videos if there's a, 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 par a part of the business that you're unfamiliar with. Um, I'm in the process now of putting together some additional um, training components uh, to make sure that people and from the from the um, very early stages of their business have the tools and the, the uh, resources they need as well as the people that are um, selling more and more homes and make sure they have the resources they need as well. So, awesome. Um, we got a couple of new faces on the group today. Good morning, everybody. Let's do one or two more uh, gratitudes or good news. Who wants to share? Hey, Bill, it's Markia. Hey, Markia, good morning. Good morning. Um, I had a listen appointment yesterday. Um, How did it go? Congratulations. It went really good. Um, she was very impressed with the presentation and she was just saying I, she never received a list presentation. Um, I was actually able to give her the market analysis uh, with how many homes was in the market uh, with the FMLS report um, and also give her the tax records. And she was very impressed. So um, she said her previous listing agent didn't give her any of that. Uh, so I was like, even though I, uh, she said I had to listen, I still wanted to do the presentation for, you know, word of mouth. So she was very impressed and we did a preview of the home and everything. So it was good. Congratulations. So I know that you, or I, I, did you use some of the components of the command listing presentation? How did you, how did you put that together? Well, no, cause I still haven't went through, I guess the whole command yet. So um, it was actually one that um, I, I did. Well, I guess that I kind of paid for um, previously and just kind of customized it to Keller Williams and, you know, active listens and everything. So, okay. Um, I'm going to, I'll log into this while the rest of the rest while you guys are talking, but I'm going to show you where to find, um, let me share my screen really quickly and I will show you where to find the listing and buyer presentations. Um, and of, of course, this isn't the only one you can use. Um, but it's one that's been developed by um, KW so that you can, um, uh, so it's nice and modern looking and it's, and it's easy to put together. Okay, so can everyone see my command screen here? Okay, 
So you go down to designs, that little square with what looks like a pen or a paintbrush or something. Okay. You go to uh, print. Is that right? Um, you guys put me on the spot here. Am I in the right place, guys? Yeah, I believe you have to so. hit the plus. Oh, plus. Yes. You hit the plus, then you go to print. Yeah. Thank you. Almost at it. Next. This is in the designs, uh, what they call applet on the far left. And then you go to listing. So these are all like jumbo postcard designs, Instagram um, uh, templates and, and images, um, templates for flyers, large postcards, standard postcards, et cetera. So if you go over to listings, listing presentation, and they have two forms here, kind of a classic looking form and a modern looking form. And you can edit these um, according to your local market stats and you know, pull in pictures of, of you and personal stats and personal resume and that kind of stuff. Um, so you can look in you know, for sale templates, just listed templates, neighborhood snaps, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Just sold, open houses, local expert, same thing with buyer. So buyer, um, here's the buyer presentation, which we'll touch on here in just a second. There's the, your guide to home ownership, a classic look and a modern look. Um, so if I click use, <clears throat> I can download um, this. It's in an editable format and it just walks you through all of the, um, see how you can edit the little squares, the writing and stuff. <clears throat> you can take out slides if you don't want to, you know, if, if it's suggesting something that you don't, find important or you don't want to offer, right? Um, and it walks them through the decision-making process. Um, your needs come first. The process has never been simpler. Building out your profile, your wish list, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to go through this um, a bit together today. But uh, this is where you find it. Any questions on that? Hey, Bill. I wanted to, to share, too. So I made mine and you guys and got it bind it you know, on the end. So when I go into oh, the nice. presentation, yeah, it's so nice. And my favorite page is from that template that's in there. There is a page, like Marquise has said, you know, of course we're going to add like our tax record and, you know, some comps to go along with it. But there is a page in here um, that's called, let me just share, how home selling works. And I think it's like a great little outline bullet point template as you're doing like a presentation you literally can just go through each of these little bullets that's already created in command and talk about each one and the significance of it as we're doing our listing presentation. So that was a huge, I think, I think it's really nice to have. And it, it really does stand out as well. I yeah. just used it on a recent one, but definitely it's complimentary. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I mean, what, what she, I think she's holding the seller one, but this is like uh -huh. the, how buying a home works, right? Partner with an agent, get pre-approved, find your new home, make your offer, negotiate the terms. Um, and then um, you go under contract and it's got a bullet point of all the things that are gonna happen later. Uh, what to do before you close, what to bring to the closing, um, uh, what, what happens at the closing, right? And then you're getting some more information about financing, home loans, um, some statistics for, for you or for the market center. Um, my competitive edge, right? And you can include whatever, whatever uh, forms there you want to include, but keep in mind that, um, how, do I, how do I say this politely? Um, the average realtor in Atlanta sells three homes a year. That's actually rounded up, okay? So you gotta understand that even if your consumer is gonna interview another agent, chances are they're not like, killing it okay so if you bring stuff like this and it's colorful and you speak confidently and you ask the right questions and you're really patient and come from contribution there's an incredibly high chance you're going to get the business mm -hmm. okay 70 percent of, of customers by the way don't even interview a second agent and 91 percent believe it I, I don't even believe this statistic but i'm going to go ahead and believe it anyway um, 91% of buyers and sellers either interview one agent or two agents before they make their choice. Okay, only 9% of consumers are gonna bring more than three, three people or more to the home to interview them. 
Okay. So if you, if you push this idea that you want to be the resource for people when they make real estate decisions, right. Or to be their partner as, it, as they're, as they're, you know, going through their planning and forecasting and thinking about whether it's a good idea or not a good idea. If you're at that table, if you're part of that consultative team, there's an incredibly high chance you're going to get the business. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I'll tell you the fastest way to screw it up though. Does anyone want to hear the fastest way to screw it up? Yes. Somebody invites you into their home and all you do is talk about you. That's the fastest way to screw it up. You mm -hmm. know what the fastest way to get the paperwork signed is? Somebody invites you into their home and you express extreme gratitude for it and then ask them a ton of questions about how they're gonna be made happy. Make sense? Kathy, you, you've done that a million times. You wanna share your, any thoughts on that? Um, you're absolutely right. And it is asking them questions and, and let them ask you questions and only then do you tell, you know, that uh, like your experience and how you're gonna get the home sold when they ask you those questions, but um, who, Give me a web. Who, um, somebody recently said, oh, I think it was Peggy Connors talking about taking a gift. I've never done that. Yeah, I never did that either. I love and, that idea. And I went and bought candles and pretty boxes. So I've got, um, I've got a listing appointment next week that I'm going to be taking a pretty smelling candle too. So, so, so let, let's, uh, let's just spend a second recapping what, what that was all about. So um, Peggy Connors is one of our top agents. She's a luxury agent. Um, and uh, she, her, her phrase was, I was taught never to come to somebody's house with, what did she say? With both my arms, the same length. Right. Yeah. That's what so it was. Meaning, meaning yeah. if, you, if you come, Holding if you walk one. in like this, you're not bringing anything. If you walk in like this, then you got, you got something in your hand to share with them, right? So um, it doesn't have to be expensive. Like Kathy said, you could be like a cute little candle or it could be, be like a, you know, a, you know, little, little tray of, you know, cheese or something like that. I don't know. But like, even if it was five or 10 bucks, I can virtually guarantee you, unless you're going up against Peggy or Kathy, they ain't bringing a gift. Okay. So that's just one, I love that tool. If you go into a, a listing appointment or even a buyer presentation, and you know, you could, uh, when you go into a buyer presentation, if you're a first time home buyer, you could bring a copy of this, your first home, right? It's a killer uh, written by Gary and Dave and, and Jay. And it's the story of a lot of the executive leaders of KW and their first time home buying experience. And talks a little bit about the process, right? Um, you could give them, uh, any type of, any type of gift. I, I, I love that concept. Um, but the, I think the biggest theme that you should be thinking of when you're in front of a seller and, and we're talking about buyers today is how can I make this experience as stress-free and as fun as possible, right? Do people prefer to be stressed or not stressed? Definitely prefer, not stressed. Do people prefer to have fun or not fun? Fun. Right. Let me, uh, let me, well, I want to share one that I did. So <clears throat> I have some, some good friends who um, had a unfortunate, <clears throat> her sister is an opioid addict. The house is a wreck. Her sister's now in assisted living. And um, the sister had two dogs that she didn't take care of. She didn't let out of the house. They just peed <clears throat> everywhere. <clears throat> so they've been in the process. They had a, um, a, a dumpster there two Saturdays ago. Um, so they've got to get all new flooring. The whole house has to be, everything has to be painted. And they were over there, she and her husband and her college age son. And um, I've, I'd been out with a couple of different people that day. And I thought, I'm just going to drive over there and get them a case of Corona light. Y'all that they loved that. Um, me popping in with cold beer, I put it in the freezer. And really this house, you couldn't go in this house without a mask on. They're just trying to get all the stuff out 
it's this is like a hazmat house that they're gonna they're paying a lot of money for somebody to come clean it but they've got to get everything out of it first or it's, that's going to cost them even more money but the beer when they got home that that night um they had had a few beers while they were there but they took the beers and they said we're going to drink the rest of these it you know it was one of those days but it just my sisters and I have been in tough situations cleaning out something and we we find that beer makes the job better and they really appreciated the beer it was so weird they loved it as much as we did yep yep um donna by the way we do have um a like one of those tools um at the office to to bind things if you if you have the if you have the, like the little ringy thing like we have a we have a tool at the office that'll do that okay great thank you okay. um Thank you for sharing that, Kathy. I, I think that at the end of the day, you, it's an it's a reminder that we have to be paying attention, right? right. We have to be paying attention. So, for example, you know, um, here's a good example. Okay, we just had it. We just had uh, somebody buy the home like across the street and like two houses over, right? And so two nights ago, uh, my wife and my kids went and myself went over to the house and met the new neighbors. And it's a guy and his soon-to-be wife. They're getting married next week. So he was drinking a, a Sweetwater 420 beer, okay? And my kids were like, let's, let's bring them something, right? And we didn't really have anything, like, sitting around the house ready to bring. And we didn't know when the house was closing and all this stuff because it got delayed. Short story is my, my son, my four-year-old son, went into the pantry and uh, we, we have like a big bag of chewing gum, right? Um, don't judge me. It's like a five pound bag from Amazon. I feel like the worst parent ever, but um, he grabbed four pieces because he, we were told that the, the family had kids, but they ended up not having kids. So he grabbed a few pieces of gum and he was going to bring it to the, to the kids, right? So I'm not really trying to pick these guys up as a real estate client, but I know the guy likes Sweetwater 420 beer. So if I'm paying attention when we go over next time with like a real closing present, it could be like a six pack of Sweetwater 420, right? If the guy is a big Auburn fan and give him something that got to do with Auburn, right? I mean, pay attention to what you're seeing in the home, right? Or what you're hearing as you're, as you're building that courtship so that you can honor that and, 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 and share something cool with them. Does that make sense? All right. So um, I'm going to encourage you guys to all go into the, uh, follow the instructions that I just showed you to go in and see the listing presentation and the buyer presentation. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that uh, we talk about a buyer, like the whole point of a buyer presentation to begin with. Okay. Now, I certainly worked with plenty of buyers without doing a buyer presentation. And the second I started putting one into place, what I noticed is that I just, it was, it was just easier. I showed less houses. Um, I had less explaining to do over and over again. Um, and the, the buyer felt more confident in every, every step of the process. Right. And there's just lo much less friction all along the way. So the point of a buyer process, you know, especially like, um, uh, well, Jen and I were talking this morning about, um, uh, working through a buyer that was having some, some hesitation, right? And what was like, hey, I'm not sure if I'm ready to buy, it's a big move, blah, blah, blah. And what they're, what they're telling you is solve these problems or help me, you know, relax me so that I'm not scared, right? So walk me through um, why that may be not something that I should be overly concerned about, right? So create that urgency and show me what I need to be, um, uh, uh, sharing with you. So this can be a more pleasant experience for both of us, right? So with that in mind, your goal is to walk them through all the steps that are going to occur in the process in a little bit more detail than you would think is necessary because they're going to appreciate that. And quite frankly, I don't really care if they bought 20 homes or not. Okay. It's a different market. They may have done that in a different state. The contracts are, unless they bought last year, or unless they bought earlier this year, the contracts are slightly different, right? So they need a little bit of an education on how this process works and how every step of the way you're going to be there with them. 
So, you know, you're going to ask them some questions very similar to the questions we did um, uh, for the listing presentation, right? What's the one thing that has to happen to make this dream scenario a reality? Well, first you ask them, well, tell me about your dream scenario, right? Tell me about how this process, like in your, in your, in your dream of this process of buying a home going as perfectly as you can possibly imagine, right? Walk me through that. What do you anticipate happening as you are seeing homes? How do you anticipate and what are you looking forward to about the contracts and negotiations? Like, what are you most fearful about? What are you most excited about? Because then I'm going to learn what type of person I'm dealing with. Is this somebody that like, you know, um, you guys ever work with like, I, it, this is going to sound terrible. Um, you know, some, some first time home buyers and I, and I love working with first time home buyers, but some first time home buyers, like they are, they're very needy, right? You have to, you got to walk them through every little piece of minutia of the deal, right? You, sometimes you work with a four or $500,000 client and they put you through the ringer before they hire you. But the second they hire you, they're like, all right, you take care of it all. Just show me where to sign. I'm busy. You see what I'm saying? And it's not quite as much like that you've already established the trust. And so they trust you. So they just let you run the show basically. Right. So am, what, am I dealing with that type of person or am I dealing with somebody that needs a lot more uh, attention and time and comfort and handholding, et cetera. Right. Um, right. How can I make this happen for you? Why is that important to you? Right. If we could add just one more thing to make this process even better, what would it be? Why is that important to you? Right. You're also doing some future pacing, helping them understand they're, they're verbalizing their dream scenario with your help. And so subconsciously what that's doing is it is, they can't, they can't put the, they can't put their finger on this, but what's happening is they are cementing into their subconscious that their perfect scenario involves you. Does that resonate? Does that make sense? Yes, so I have a question. Could you assume with the buyer's presentation that you're referring to that once you make one for a buyer's, you don't necessarily have to change it unless you're um, changing a person's name as if you would do a listing appointment with a lot more changes? Um, possibly. I mean, it, it just depends. Like if you're, if you're working, um, you, you may offer different services slightly, or you might ha highlight different parts of the transaction if it's like a luxury client versus a not, not luxury client, or if it's an investor client versus a non-investor client. So um, yeah, for the most part, you could probably keep the presentation exactly the same. Um, however, uh, if, there's, if you're gonna adjust your, your offering package based on who you're, who you're in front of, then, um, you know, you could quickly change that out or resave it as a different title or something and pre-print and pre-bind some of those. Remember that the presentation is not necessarily, um, you know, there's, there's parts in here where you're going to want to take notes, right? So you might want to, you know, you bring your iPad or a piece of paper or something like that to take notes while they're looking through this or you're looking through it together and you're jotting down, you know, big backyard, four bedrooms, two-story family room, you know, fenced yard, some antennas, basement, that kind of stuff, right? Now, so just I, some experience when people are people going on buyers presentations or like most consultations I have with buyers are like over the phone. So like with COVID, do you recommend like putting the presentation together and kind of sending this over to them and say, hey, let's go over the presentation that I sent over to you? Okay, you, you packed a lot in there. I want to I want to try to get get to all that. Okay. So okay. are, are you suggesting that the seller presentations because of COVID are still in person yet the buyer ones are not in person? Well, yeah, I guess because most of the time with the listing presentation, you have to preview the home. So people set time aside for, you know, their home to be inspected so that they can, so that you can see what the value of the house is. Right. I would encourage you if you're comfortable with it and if you, Oh, all, but before you do any of this stuff, you got to figure out what their COVID risk level is. We'll come back to that in a second. But if they're comfortable and you're comfortable, I would suggest meeting in a public place, if not the office. 
because you do not want to try to explain the contracts and the due diligence periods and all that kind of stuff as they're going up and down stairs, not paying attention to you anyway, right? You want to lay the groundwork and have this type of presentation uh, at, the, at the very least in Zoom where you can watch how they react to stuff, right? So let's say, John, let's say you're my buyer. Play along with me for a second. Sure. I say, John, I want to, I want you to know, you, it looks like you're buying a home in the between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars. And according to my research here, um, the about thirty six percent of those sellers will sell their home at list price or above list price. So we can assume that that's probably because of multiple buyers, multiple offers, right? Now, right. as a result, the best values in the marketplace are going to come on and off the market very quickly. And the potential buyers are going to have to be pretty aggressive in the terms and price that they put out there. So, John, if, I, if you tell me the type of property you want and I bring it right to you, would you be willing to pay list price or above list price to secure the property? Now, I'm not suggesting that you overspend for the home. That's not what I'm asking but would you be prepared to spend over list price or list price to got buy the home you want? It's certainly something I'd consider. Absolutely, Bill. Beautiful. That's a great client. That's somebody who's willing to hear the data and move forward so that they can win. If instead John said, well, I ain't buying a home for over list price. Are you nuts? I don't care what you say, right? Then I have to say to myself, hmm, do I want to leave my family to work with this dude? Right? Or let me ask a few more questions to see if, if he just needs some more information to make a better, to give a better answer, right? So if we go back to what Marquis is saying is, um, you know, do you, um, do, you, do you present the same way? Do you ask the same way each time? Uh, for the most part, yes, but you, you've got to figure out what type of person you're dealing with, right? And, and how to approach them specifically, right? What are their biggest fears about the process? What are they most excited about the process? Have they ever worked with a real estate agent before, right? What part of that relationship did they really enjoy? What part did they really struggle with? How would they like to be communicated with, right? All of these types of questions. So did, um, I feel like I lost track a little bit of what, your, what one of your other questions was, Marquia. Did I answer all that? Yes, I did. Yes, yes you did. Okay. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the, the actual, the, the questions that, oh, oh, well, I know what I was going to say. Um, what I was told many years ago, I, I don't know if you were in this bold, Kathy, this is like eight or nine years ago. Um, John Prescott told us that if you show more than five homes to a buyer, then one of two things is happening. Either you have not asked them enough questions or you don't know the market well enough. Now, when I heard that, I was like, that dude is crazy. And the, and the longer it's been since that learning moment, the more I believe it, right? We don't need to take them to every single home in the world. They don't want to waste their time, right? So when they say, I want a big backyard, you say, great. A big backyard is, means something different to every person. Can you describe the big, what you mean by big backyard, right? If they grew up in Brooklyn and they didn't have a yard, then maybe a 10 by 10 yards big. If they grew up on a 200 acre farm and I bring them to a home with a quarter of an acre backyard, they're like, what is this? Right? So go a little bit more detailed because the more that they talk, again, the more that they'll like you. Right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm all over the place this morning. Marquia, you also asked about um, uh, whether you meet the person in a, in a public place, right? So I highly recommend a professional setting for this meeting. Okay. At the very least, do it over Zoom. I want to see how you're responding, John, to the things that I'm saying. I want to see your body language. I want to see your cues. I think visual cues are essential right because if you're like right right i know that i need to ask some more questions about how to kind of bring you out of your shell a little bit right um but if they're like 
you know, if they're like, honey, bring the pen, let's sign it. Right. right? right. Then I know that like okay. I'm on the right track. Does it make sense? Sure. Okay. Um, I want to, I want to spend some more time in, in the coming weeks, really, really refining our buyer presentations and listing presentations. So what I'm going to, my, my, um, my, my assignment for the day, if you will, is I want to make sure that at, at a moment's notice, if a buyer says, I want to learn more about buying and it's time now for a buyer consultation, I want you to have that process scripted, right? What tools am I going to need? What am I going to do it over Zoom? What do I say if I only get a chance to do it over the phone? What do I say if I'm given the opportunity to do it over Zoom? What materials am I going to bring if I am able to do it in an office or the Starbucks or something, right? What is that? How, how is that going to look, right? So you can use some of these systems and some of these scripts as a guide. And, and we can obviously, I can help you and we can help each other. But I want you to be ready to have those conversations at a moment's notice, okay? So I, mm, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a reach goal, okay? I'd like for you to have both the buyer presentation and the listing presentation done before the end of this month. Okay, guys, that's, that is what we do. Basketball players shoot baskets. Football players run the ball. Real estate agents, we give presentations. That's what we do, right? So I don't want any more time to go on without you being ready and confident with whatever uh, papers you need, whatever um, uh, stats you need to be able to present in a very confident, instructional way. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. What questions do we have, guys? Okay, let me go through some, uh, some homework or some, uh, some opportunities for today. This room from 11 to 12 o'clock today, Laura Lerman, um, a top producer, AL, or not ALC member, a uh, top producer, um, will be um, probably a future ALC member, um, will be uh, doing a Facebook class. That's from 11 to 12 o'clock today. And um, I also have like 15 one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. So if I've got a call with you today, please make sure that your uh, numbers are updated for me. I also have my coaching call at uh, two o'clock. And that is the only thing we talk about. So um, please don't uh, don't let me say, oh, well, I'm still waiting on a couple people. Um, and don't forget that we also have the Georgia Legacy Group Scripts class today from two to three. I will post that link in the um, in the uh, what do you call it in the uh, WhatsApp uh, just a bit later. Sound good? Yeah. All right, guys. Um, let me see if there's anything else I wanted to review with you. Okay, I think we're good. I um, hope today was helpful. Y'all go have an awesome day, okay? Thanks. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye.